Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Uh, but King James Bible says, Then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. This thing, this ridiculous perversion says, so faith comes from listening, but it's listening by means of Christ's message. <laughs> yeah. Okay, man, whatever. Look at this beautiful one here. Romans chapter 16. I'm introducing our sister Phoebe to you, who is a deacon. Also, now we got female uh, ministry, heads in, in ministry. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure. And then it has a little footnote here, or a servant. Now, I'm going to remember this thing because I'm going to show you why this is important later. I'm going to show you the agenda here to bring in female pastors. Just absolutely disgusting. Makes me mad. Galatians chapter 5. The works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Oh, no, no, no. It's not the flesh anymore. It's the actions that are produced by selfish motives are obvious. Just ridiculous. And here, instead of witchcraft, you have drug use and casting spells. Hate. Ooh. No, it's hatred. All right. Competitive opposition. Boy, that's clear. Selfishness. Okay. Uh, those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh. Oh, no. No, it's just self. See? Ridiculous. Uh, let's not become arrogant. Make each other angry. Well, you people are making me angry, I'll tell you that. Anybody out there that loves God's Word, I'm sure is angry too. Okay, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast, you know. Uh, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. It says, this salvation is God's gift. It's not something you possessed. It's not something you did that you can be proud of. Huh? I'm proud of the fact that I got saved. See, just weird wording. There's so much interpretation that you could do here as a lost person. They leave just tremendous loopholes for people that are lost. It's just, it's just so disgusting. Now look at this. Look, look, look at this one. You know, remember, this is supposed to be politically correct. Wives should respect their husbands. Okay, any problem there? Not really, but look here beside the word respect, there's a little thing. Look at the footnote. Or fear. So, you should fear your husband if you're a wife. Yeah, okay. Ephesians chapter 6. Forces of cosmic darkness. Well, that clears it up, doesn't it? <clears throat> Incredible. Okay, one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. They say human. Christ Jesus. Now, is there any doubt that Jesus was a man? Why would they change him to a human? See, there's a satanic agenda there. <clears throat> now, it says I, a woman is to be silent in the church. I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man. They change it to wife. A wife to teach or to control her husband. So, in other words, if you're a single woman, I guess then it's okay to be a pastor. See, yeah. 1 Timothy chapter 3, about bishops within the church. This is a faithful saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good thing. If anyone has a goal to be a supervisor in the church, anyone, man or woman, the church's supervisor must be without fault. They should be faithful to their spouse. King James Bible says the husband of one wife. See the problem? And it goes on to say man and he and things. They change it to the they. They, 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 they. See? So now you can have female pastors. Wicked abomination right there. Just disgusting. Then you go down to deacons. Remember what Phoebe was called back there in Romans chapter 16? She was called a deacon. Servants. They're no longer deacons. It's just a servant in the church. Women. Who are servants in the church? Oh boy. Then it goes on to about, in the King James Bible, talks about the wife of a deacon. Here it just says, servants must be faithful to their spouse. So again, you have female leadership within the church. Look at that. Just wicked abomination. Feminism is not of God. I'll tell you what. The warning in 1 Timothy chapter 4 about commanding to abstain from meats. I was just eating food now. So they've removed the warning about vegetarianism, radical vegetarianism. 
Incredible. Okay. Here they say, look at this contradiction that they make. They think that godliness is a way to make money. Actually, godliness is a great source of profit when it is combined with being happy in what you already have. Yeah, okay, they just contradict themselves there. It's ridiculous. And, and you know, they change 1 Timothy 6.10. Love of money is the root of all evil. Oh, no, it's all just all kinds of evil. Yeah, change it again. And here, the warning against evolution, science falsely so-called, they change it to so-called knowledge. I'm going to be doing a video in a little bit about the fact that this reading was available in 1610 in the Jesuit Dewey Reims Bible. That's all these new versions are. They are just remakes of the De Jesuits' Dewey Reims Bible. Okay, they're not new. <clears throat> okay, Titus chapter 2. Actually, I'm going to look this one up quick. Okay, here we have the King James Bible. It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation, bringeth salvation, not that has brought salvation, bringeth salvation, hath appeared to all men. Sorry, Calvinists, anybody can get saved, okay? The grace of God which bringeth, or that bringeth salvation, hath appeared to all men, okay? It's not that all men are saved, it's that it, it has appeared to them. They can get saved if they want to. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people. So according to this ridiculous perversion here, Everybody's saved. Wasn't that wonderful? Catholics and Protestants and Jews and Muslims and we're all saved. Right there. These words come straight out of a devil's mouth. Right there. Unbelievable that they would put that in there. <clears throat> of course, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 10, they'd have to say that, the new order. You know that's going to be in there. Okay, uh, you know, here we have, uh, by faith we understand that the universe was uh, created by the word of God. It's just a word from God now. Not created by the word of God. Definitive article, it's just a word from God. Okay, um, 1 Peter chapter 2, desire the... the, the uh, See, I can't even think of it, looking at this junk here, about the pure, the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Nourished by it, you will grow into salvation. Yeah, grow into salvation. Not you get saved and you know you're saved. No, you have to grow into salvation. A couple more here. Sarah called him Lord. No, it's master now. Husbands, likewise, submit. <laughs> oh boy, a little feminist there going on. Uh, Christ was put to death as a human. Why doesn't it say man? Jesus Christ was obviously a man. Why are they saying human? Now, the King James Bible says that every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. You say that about somebody who's alive. He is come in the flesh is not from God, the spirit of, the, of Antichrist. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come as a human is from God. And every spirit that doesn't confess Jesus is not from God. Confess Jesus? Antichrist Bible, right here. Disgusting. Second John. Jesus Christ came as a human being. Why are they removing the word man? Here you have John in the spirit. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He was in a spirit-inspired trance. <laughs> yeah, man. That clears it up. His wrath. The day of his wrath has come. The lamb. Their wrath. Who's the there? I mean, give me a break. There's more than one lamb of God? Come on, people. If you stand for this, man, something's wrong with you. You're probably not saved if, you're, if you, oh, I think it's a good version. Something's wrong with you. Okay, here you have the locusts coming out of the bottomless pit. They have the faces of men, the hair of women. 
they change it to human faces, but they don't change the human down here. I mean, let's be fair. Let's be tolerant. Let's, you know, if you're going to change it to human here, why not human down there? See the feminist agenda? Disgusting. Um, the mystery of God should be finished. There's going to come a time towards the end of the tribulation when people are going to get to see God physically. God in the person of Jesus Christ when he comes back to rule and reign on this earth for 1,000 years. But it's not the mystery of God anymore. It's God's mysterious purpose. Yeah. Revelation chapter 19. It's not he that sits on the horse. It's now its rider. It's why? And again, here in Revelation chapter 20, Revelation chapter 19, the King James Bible, of the, the false prophet and the beast are cast into the lake of fire. And after the thousand years are completed, Satan is cast into the lake of fire. And it says where the beast and the false prophet are in the King James Bible. And look at this wicked perversion, were. So you have the Jehovah's Witness reading here, the Jehovah's Witness, what they would love to have in theirs, I guess, that they were there. They were annihilated. They were burned up. Hell is not an eternal state of punishment. Not according to the King James Bible. According to the King James Bible, it they are still there. They are in the lake of fire. Now, after seeing all the obvious, just over-the-top perversions in this thing, I got to tell you, if any of you people out there write and defend this garbage, I don't believe you're saved. I do not believe a Christian with the Holy Ghost living within them, I don't believe that you can defend that kind of junk. Okay? A Bible version created by Catholics and Protestants, by Jesuits, they openly admit to it. Why would you defend this kind of junk? Okay? And you say, well, okay, yeah, that's bad, but I sure do love my NIV. Your NIV is part of the same crowd. You want religious unity? You want unity among the brethren? Speak the same thing, the same mind, the same judgment. That's what you're supposed to do. We're all to be in one accord. It's only possible if you're a King James Bible believer. You better wake up. You had better wake up if you are a modern Christian that defends these new versions over here. You better wake up. You better return to the old paths. You want religious freedom? You want to not be thrown into jail and, and tortured and persecuted for your faith? You better return to the book that brings religious freedom. This is the book that our founding fathers here in America had with them. That's why the First Amendment is about freedom of religion. That's what it's about. You want freedom? Here's the book. You want tyranny? Then you go with this garbage over here. Okay? That's your option. There is no other option. Man, you better get right. That's it.